recipients of a TIG grant of, uh, of Paul. Um, so what we're going to talk to you about is... Uh, can you explain for the Chinese scholars what it yeah, is? Yeah, it's a teaching, well, teaching innovation grant. So it's a grant set to, um, but to help us innovate with our teaching. So we've been playing around with um, mobile phones for a while before that. So what we're going to talk to you about today is what we've done with Paul's money, basically. Um, <laughs> Paul, 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 the money you're responsible for. Um, and, and also point out a few things we've picked up um, along the way. Um, yeah, and then we're going to talk about our latest um, embryonic project, which is with the DMLL. Do you know what the DMLL is? Disruptive Media Learning Lab. Basically, they took over the third floor of the library, did all the books out. It's <laughs> arty creative space. So, um, yeah, we'll talk about um, the, well, the work we're doing with them at the moment so, so in the final part of the presentation. Yeah. So yes, very quickly, as we mentioned, because we were asked to do the uh, to talk about TIG and why, how do we use the money, we just uh, decided to put so we put in our form for receiving the money and the proposal. What we were talking about, uh, the idea was obviously, uh, as Billy mentioned, we have been doing a lot of work with uh, technology, with mobile learning, math and code. Uh, mobile learning, uh, um, language learning. But uh, specifically for the grant, we decided that we wanted to use it because we had originally started with uh, working on a project previously, which included uh, uh, augmented reality, but it didn't work uh, at the first stage. So we didn't want to totally give up. So we carried on and we decided to use the WhatsApp application and uh, use it as a pilot project for the Advantage Module Learning Italian. Uh, and uh, this is what we wanted for getting our money. Uh, what uh, the project will look at, so the affordances of the emerging technologies and uh, in working with integrated skills and what they learn and why, because we were thinking that using the mobile we would use all the four skills or languages, which is reading, speaking. I'm, I'm checking if you're listening to me and you're not listening. <laughs> so reading, speaking, <laughs> writing, and listening. Okay. Key Which is the key one <laughs> that I'm just trying to um, <laughs> emphasize. Okay. Now, originally, as we said, this is the, <coughs> the starting point of the augmented reality. And as you can see, this picture is also in Italian. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously, you know, we've already done a presentation, so we, because we got so much and we got little time to go through, uh, we just put a picture of augmented reality. Uh, do you want to add anything? Well, just saying, yeah, we, this is what we were looking at um, initially, well, two or three years ago. Things have moved on quite a lot now. It's, it's certainly, with mobile learning, it's become a lot more widespread. Um, and we'll, we'll, we won't put it. Okay, so how many of you do use WhatsApp? So we got a few. So this is a, what an explanation of WhatsApp is. It's a cross-platform for messaging services, uh, which is used mostly, I don't, in China I don't think you use WhatsApp, uh, but uh, across Europe it's uh, very, very popular. And uh, a lot of the people just use it for messaging, for sending video, uh, for chatting to friends <coughs> and people that they don't without, obviously it's free of charge, so which is quite good. So this was the starting point. As I said, we a lot of you have seen a lot of our presentation about what we're doing. So we can't really, we just skim it very quickly through. And uh, while we were playing, like we use this mm, nerves, uh, way, this terminology, <coughs> we came across the some um, framework, yeah. some new model, which do you want to say something well, yeah, we'll about? Well, just quickly say something about this. It becomes sort of established. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't thought up with language learning in mind, but it's essentially been adopted across the disciplines. Um, so substitution, one of the examples of that would be using getting students to, to, to do a, a, a of English to uh, write down a dictation in the text, in their text messaging. The augmentation could be bringing photographs rather than getting them to bring them in physically. They've all got photographs on their phone and uh, it, goes, it goes on. So what we're going to be focusing on at the end is the is the re redefinition? Yeah. yeah. Is the redefinition where we, we're hope, hopefully going to be uh, well, outlining to you our plans, our embryonic plans, to um, to use uh, 
students mobile phones for something you can't do without them. So, uh, redefinition. Now, we have uh, still, while we were experimenting, we've been using QR codes, and for this, we decided to give you a little trial on something. Yeah. Right, so if any of you has got a mobile phone here, please, if you could uh, very quickly. No, okay, if you can put this thing down and download very, very quickly something called iNigma. It's I and then dash Nigma. Uh, I don't know why we have the other version. As I say, can you use any QR code? You can use any QR code. But the one we recommend is I dash Nigma, I N uh, N I G M. You can close it if you do. It's just a little try. This is what we've been doing with students in class using. It's not very flashy picture of you, Marie, I'm afraid. You didn't tell me to bring my phone. <laughs> well, if we're talking about <laughs> mobile phone, you know, and then you always have your mobile phone to catch us. So, uh, you know, with students, so I assume it's the least flattering photograph of you at the time. No, we wanted to, but I I changed it. Pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? No? It's not working. I Nigma, N I G M A. Or maybe you need to come and get close. It was just something that we experimented using QR codes. When we started to use the WhatsApp, I'll, I'll carry on talking while you're trying to download. Yes, that's easy. And we'll be, um, the, the, the point of this is it's technologies like this and another one called um, Bluetooth Beacon that we will be using and demonstrating. Uh, Never mind. Yeah, it's worked. So she's got So basically, originally the idea was to put a picture of Sarina. When she first started here, but I thought you might not be I'll be surprised actually, you've got it to go, it does come up several pictures of you. Okay, so yeah, the purpose of this one, just to, just to um, highlight some of the new technology, this one, another one called Bluetooth Beacon Technology, which is a similar thing, only using Bluetooth. Less, uh, less stress on your battery as well, you don't need to be on a network if you're free on your phone. So this is going to be into these kind of technologies, for example, of one of the ones which will be integrated into the program, I'm going to show you. Yes, and then we've been using practice with the students just to use the mobile technology in the classroom. Because one of our principal ideas is to move from... Really? Go back to the barcode. Oh, right, you're still trying to get it. It's all right now. It's, it's nothing. Um, <coughs> but it is. It's, 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 anyway. So, so basically, you, you can, just to, just to explain this a little bit more while we're back at it, you can actually use these to put any, any web address. You go to the, uh, the, the previous slide, put in the web address, hit the button, and it gives you a QR code. So you, you can link to any text, any image, any website. It's just a quick way of doing that. And you can also, if you've got your handouts, any handout you've got, students often like that on their phone these days, you can actually cut and paste the QR code, you can pull it apart, it doesn't have to stay the same size, stick it onto, on, onto your, the corner of your handout and the students can scan it and they've got the document too. So it's got, they've got lots of use. It's very quick to do, it's literally two seconds yes. for the address. So we've been experimenting with this, working with the students and seeing <coughs> if actually they liked it. And going back to, the WhatsApp and the QR code. This is some of the things we've been using. For WhatsApp, we've been using uh, treasure hands with our students. So the main purpose of this was to break down the walls of classroom and just send them out. Uh, and they did uh, treasure hands. So using clues, using hands out, and maybe uh, there is, uh, um, mm, they have to follow a path, basically. And uh, the, what they liked most was the fact that it was immediate. So we were just sending them out, giving revision, and they had to send us messages, video, text, they're listening to a uh, short clip, and also uh, write something. So they were practicing, as I was saying before, when I was trying to test you, and you failed miserably, was they all did the four skills together. So now, uh, this is, as I said, very rushed, very quickly, um, an overlook of what we've done. How with the outcome of the project now, this is, uh, we have to put this in our TIG application, and we put all the ticks uh, for courtesy of, sorry, 
control the grants that we fulfilled our obligations. To say we fulfilled what we said, so if you remember our proposal, so it's all done, that part is all done. And now, this is the other thing, so the, the other question was in the form, you say, how might the work be developed in, future, in the future, and, or further? And this is what we did. We pitched our ideas to the Disruptive Media Lab in the Dragon's Den uh, condition, so we had to go and present <coughs> for uh, an audience, uh, all sitting on the grass. If you haven't been uh, to the place, you can see it's just all the steps, and all covered in fake grass, so we did uh, our spiel there, spiel there. And actually, uh, they liked it, so they contacted us further on, mm -hmm. and they told us to carry on working. Well, and yeah, we, we, yeah, we were lucky enough, I think, as well, to mention Mr. Sylvester. Yes. One, one of the uh, guys who used to work in the Serious Games Institute, who's involved with the DMLL, his thing is around what they call pervasive yeah. learning, which will come and unification. in a minute. So this is what's the idea, how we will develop it further. And uh, um, this is to take a quote from Bernardo that he says what is happening now, learning activities are changing. So we are, they are, so far, we are, oh, they were limited to what we were saying before, the classroom, a brick and mortar classroom, and they've been like this for a long time. So what's happening with the advance of technologies, with mobile learning, we're trying to develop the education in a different direction. And this is what Billy was mentioned to you. I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, uh, terminology. We were novice as well, and so now we're getting into the research of pervasive mobile learning, which is a different way of uh, uh, teaching and learning for the students. It's a total new experience. Uh, so the more, the, this is a, exactly emphasize what we're doing. The learner is moving around with a mo with his mobile and is also supported by the, uh, all the embedded devices into the environment. So our research question then was at the time, and it still is at the um, DMLL, the Disruptive Media Lab is this, how can a pervasive approach transform the teaching and learning practice, always within the four skills that we were talking about, because we are always focusing on language learning, as you know. So, Billy, if you want to uh, wait for <coughs> that, I'll just carry on. Um, yeah, how are we doing the time, really? Your voice. Go on. You've got five minutes. Oh, All right, okay. Gosh. In that case, so yeah, this is just a slide showing you it's per pervasive learning, so you know, it's like the informal, the social, and the formal. Um, so, you can have eight minutes if you want, depends on how many questions you get. Um, so, so we, we, we went along to the DMLL and, and pitched our idea, which was basically built on top of um, what we've been doing already um, with the, our, our attempts to use augmented reality and to use WhatsApp. Um, so, a mobile approach to language learning. Blending what is the physical and the digital learning spaces, and obviously an application to support all. And, and one of the problems we've had all the time around using the mobiles um, in Coventry is that it's limited to your location, especially if you're using you know, GPS coordinates to, to, to uh, prepare your activities. So it wasn't scalable. Perhaps you could translate it to different languages in Coventry, but it's not something you could use around the world. So that's really important to us. Really. What we were designing is a, a shell that can be populated by tutors irrespective of their uh, geographical location, so it has to be scalable. Exactly, and this is what uh, was picked up during the DMLL, and they said, yes, we like your ideas, we like what you're doing, so we need to populate something that is not just, uh, it would be scalable, and not just for the locality, which was what we done. Why? Why are we going to do all this trouble, and why are we doing this? One, because we really take, we enjoy doing what we're doing as a research, but also because we're trying, as I said again, like Len has mentioned already before, trying to get over the barrier of a lot of um, engagement. Engage, well, yes, engagement is first, but we've got a lot of barriers that we have to cross for assessment, for uh, getting through the, the problems that the university uh, is um, obviously as a structure presenting that way. So we're trying to find a new way to deliver a language learning in a more exciting way. So task-based learning, orientation with treasure hands, improve their engagement and improve also students' uh, digital literacy. Now this is very quickly, as I said, there really is a embryonic state. So this is how we're going to do it. Uh, basically, uh, this is uh, we're working on four layers. Mostly, uh, Billy and I will concentrate on layer one and two, which is the outcomes, the theories. Anchor points are seen as important points for the treasure hunt because we'll be a mobile. So we're going to scroll the anchor points, we choose some important parts, and then these anchor points will become sub-anchor points. So they, students will 
we'll, uh, we'll go around and we'll, we'll explain it later on, and that's the measurement and also the location activity. The other two parts, the other two layers, the gamification and the pervasive or the computing learning uh, will be more focused by uh, the EMLL part. So now, at the moment in time, we work on the first uh, uh, unit of the chapter. We all use it for advantage, uh, one the same, for all the levels, level one, level two, level three, for absolute beginners. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the learning objective, the mechanics, and the pedagogy, and the measurement and desired outcomes of how we're going to do that. So this is the first layers, and as you can see very, very quickly, it's aimed at absolute beginners, students in level one, in year one, and the, some of the anchor points will be you know, uh, important parts, then we will really um, associate <coughs> with points in around the city, okay? And uh, that's the second layers, how, again, the dynamics and uh, landmarks or other anchor points will be cathedral, the Godiva, the people Tom, transport <coughs> museum. So we also link the culture with the language. Some of them are a bit tenuous, you might add. The uh, fountain in yes. the precinct, we linked with the famous one in Rome. And the other the Italian thing, <laughs> we found out, it's a bit of, a bit of trivia really, that the, uh, the scene in the original Italian job with the minis was filmed in the Co sewers of Coventry. Yeah. I think they've got one of the original minis in the transport museum. Yes, museum. <laughs> yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. so we try to find these kind of links between Coventry and Italy yeah. and try to find some, some of the restaurants are typical because yes. although they're Italian restaurants, the menus tend to be in English. English. So the idea is to try to look around the environment to, to, to find uh, things like, for example, in the alphabet, using this new beacon, uh, Bluetooth beacon technology, you can get the students to point their phones at the letters on the shops and it will then do O or P. In, so, in, this are, yes. <laughs> so using the environment really to, for them to interact with to help them with their language. And then obviously with the part of the gamification will be a kind of app where the students will have to learn <coughs> the stages and they have to unlock. And every time they lock one part, they can progress to the next one. Uh, and there will be a sort of mechanic three points or badges or a progress bar. So they cannot progress unless they finish that kind of unit. So they, they will uh, carry on forward and will get re some kind of reward, some trigger. This is, as I said, is something that uh, we are still looking at. And one thing is important that Ivan said is that at the moment with the DMLL we are working together, Billy and I, and with uh, the staff in the DMLL, but we also have the support of the students because we've got four students that they are really engaged, they are love technologies, and they are also guiding us through the ideas of what they would find something interesting, something boring, something would work, and, and something that's They didn't like the idea of getting on a train and going to Birmingham to a restaurant. Or things like that. So they, they're just given a lot of ideas as well, how they would like the app to work and function. Okay, so the objectives, as we say, just to recap, and we're almost finished, is the learner engagement and the benefits, so that they take part in the activities, game, reflections on the learning process and uh, the self-reporting um, questionnaire at the end. <coughs> the feasibility, as I said, we're working on the shell and we'll be the focus for the interface later on. Okay. And that's it. And I think that's it. And as we say, this is at the moment, we just presented what we've done so far, but there's a lot of further developments that is in the okay. first stage. It's worth pointing out at this point as well that we have someone working on the technical side of it. Yes. Just to Finally. build build it to our um, needs, and yeah, at the moment we're just looking at one unit of so one chapter. We've kind of mapped it across to the Italian book that Tiziana's using with the beginners, but the, the pilot will just be the one chapter. And yeah, and you can see that it's in its infancy. We've got a meeting next week to start putting a bit more meat on the bones, but yes, and uh, that's, that's all the these kind of technology, the beginners, and the AR, and many more, and games. Okay.